Welcome to Bar Chart series of webinars designed to educate you about a variety of market concepts, inform you of the features and tools Bar Chart provides related to those concepts, and finally to offer you some traders' insight to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's session commodity exposure through equities. So while most equity traders' decisions process of whether to buy or sell stocks is a mix of maybe fundamental analysis, earning for share, positive income flow, sales, and some technical analysis, trend lines, momentum, you know, sector rotation, these same traders neglect an important component, commodities. And especially those equities that are in the commodities business. The trends of commodities has a high correlation behind the pricing of these commodity sensitive equities. Hello everyone, my name is John Rowland, Bar Charts Head of Trading Education. And some of you might be familiar with my professional background, which Got its start in the commodity sector many moons ago. Um, but what I've observed over decades was that some stocks prices correlated highly with their underlying related commodities and why others didn't. So today what I wanted to do is share with you some of these stocks, but also I wanted to show you some of the features that are on bar chart to help you recognize developing trends in commodities and these commodity stocks. Now, before we get to that, please welcome and my partner and our moderator, Bar Charts Project Director, Gene Baker. Hello, Gene. Good afternoon, John. How are you? I am doing great. How are you doing? Oh, just fine, just fine. <laughs> doing well. I believe it's, that. It's gorgeous, oh, I'm sorry. gorgeous afternoon here in the Chicagoland area. So. Yeah, we have a really nice day too. A little front blew through, and now it's low humidity, beautiful blue skies. I was just gonna say, it's it's hard to believe that you know the if what we consider summer is over. Boy, this year seems to be flying by, doesn't it? That's right. And all those commodities out in the field are going to be uh, harvested soon, and that kind of falls into what you're going to be talking about today. I hope. I think so. Yeah, get yeah, definitely corn and soybeans. Very good, Gene. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So you ready to get started then? Absolutely. Let's get the show on the road. Okay, great. All right. So as always, you remember that today's session is for educational purposes only and decisions to buy, sell, hold, or trade in securities, commodities, or any other investments involves risk and invest made on the advice of a qualified financial professional and under no similar circumstances. Shall we be liable for any loss or damages you or any of us incurs as a result of trading activity that you or anyone engages in based on information or material that you receive through barchart.com and our services? But before we get started, I do want to add one more element to this disclosure in that today's process is less about timing and signals and is more about the confirmation of interdependencies and looking for those opportunities of correlation. And that by no means that the equities that I'm going to show you are a recommendation or an endorsement. These are just equities that have, from my experience, that have high correlations to their, their, their commodities. And that in order for you as a risk taker, it's important that you do your own due diligence to make sure that these are the trades that you want to take. Um, okay, can't stress that enough. All right, so let's do this. Uh, so where are we going to start our process? So we're going to start in um, the futures section here, and I've gone to something called the futures trading guide. Now, the futures trading guide is basically a hypothetical trading system that looks at two moving averages, the nine day and the 18 day moving average. And when the nine day uh, breaks from below to above the 18, that is a buy signal. And when it breaks from above to below the 
18 day, then that is interpreted as a sell signal. Now these buy and sell signals represent potential emergence of new trends, but they're also alerts us of the end of an existing trend. Now, if you're interested about how we use this in terms of trading for futures, there is a webinar on um, the futures trading. I think we actually have a couple of them, so I recommend that you watch this. But how are we gonna use this this buy and sell signal information for equities trading. So we're gonna look at the new signal as an opportunity to identify a possible new trend. Now, unlike the instant trade for, let's say a futures trade, is which this is set up for, as equity traders, we wanna use this with a bit of discretion or patience. Now, in other words, what I'm really saying to you is, we're going to use the futures trading guide signal as a green light for investigation. We're going to do our due diligence to look for those trading opportunities in the equities that are related to these commodities. Not a buy or sell signal, but the permission to look for a trade. In other words, if I have a buy signal on a particular commodity, then the permission I'm giving myself in that equity would be, I would only be looking for buying opportunities. I'm not gonna look for sell opportunities. I'm just gonna look for those that are in concert with our trend. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait a few days after a signal has occurred, and we're gonna wait to confirm the price action of the trend. Now, ideally, for uptrends, we want to see both the moving averages, the 9 and 18, are positively sloped, or at least um, turning that way. So here I'm on crude. I'm going to go to where it shows view, view details. And this is going to show me the futures trading guide signal. Now, I want you to notice here, right in this cluster here, that our 18 day, which is represented by the blue line here, is trending downward or sloping downward. And then we got the buy signal when the nine crossed over the blue. That's how that hypothetical trading system works. So you can see here that in this instance, this is not a great buy signal in terms of a beginning of a new trend. All this is telling us at this point is that this sell signal, this previous sell signal, or this downtrend, the momentum has stopped, and that this is kind of telling us that this downtrend has ended. And the reason why we're going to use patience, right? We're not going to just jump into a trade. We're going to wait a few days. We're going to wait for that confirmation in price action. As you can see, the next day, it literally gave us another sell signal and price went back down again. Now, in recent days, we did get a buy signal. Now, what's different is that our 18-day moving average at this point is not trending down. It's not sloping down, but it's certainly not sloping upwards. I would say it's probably you know sideways. But again, we kind of want to wait for that price confirmation. and what do we see that price is doing? Well, price is kind of floundering right between our two moving averages, right? If I wanted to see a new uptrend, right, I would probably want to start seeing a series of higher lows and higher highs. Now, do we see that? Yeah, we kind of see that. But price right now is kind of hanging out on the low end of these two moving averages. I really would like to see price start to get above this moving average. So it doesn't mean that I can't take a trade in a equity that is commodity related to crude oil. It just means that I need to be a little bit more diligent and a little bit, you know, go through my process a little bit deeper to make sure that I am seeing uh, the same scenario that I'm getting from our futures trading guide. Now, if we look at corn, right, we see a little bit of a different story, right? Here we see our 
moving averages have flattened and started to turn just a little bit, right? A little bit upsloping, not much. But again, there's our buy signal. And again, the patience, one, two, three days, now we start seeing price above both of my moving averages. Again, confirming that uh, new potential buy trend or bull trend. And at this point, you know, the signal happened on August 3rd, but at this point at August 9th, then that would give me again, that permission, to start looking for those equities that have a high correlation to, in this case, corn, okay? So on our futures page, where it's the futures market overview, this is kind of a snapshot of what's going on in the futures market. Right down here, we have something called the futures trading new trade alert. And so every day, if there's a new signal is generated from our futures trading guide, this is where you can find it. Now, what I do is I would go to the full list and up here, you see that you can check this box and receive new trades. In other words, that signal. Again, if this is a commodity that I'm interested in, or it's the ones that I use to look for opportunities in these particular equities, then this kind of puts me on alert and it allows me the permission to start my trade plan, my risk assessment, my risk management, and that process to allow me to trade those equities. But what also I can do with this futures trading guide is I can kind of reverse this process. Let's say um, I want to take a long or short in an equity. Let, I'm just going to use energy as an example because you know the energy sector has been one of the outperforming sectors of the S&P you know, of recent so I want to get into, you know, that sector, into those commodities, excuse me, those uh, equities. What I would do is I would come to the futures trading guide trading page to confirm that the signal in the commodity is the same signal or the proper trend that I see with my equities. In other words, I want to see a buy signal in the commodity if I'm going to look for a buying opportunity let's say in a oil stock. So this concert of between our futures trading guide signal and uh, the trend or the process that I'm using for my uh, decision-making in the equities. All right, so that's kind of how we're gonna look at this process. And what I'm gonna do now here is I'm gonna show you a watch list. And again, this, again, not an endorsement of any particular equity. These are just equities that I have experienced for many years that have a higher correlation um, to their underlying commodity. So what I've done is on this watch list is, you know, I have the commodity and then I have the equity. I have the commodity and I have the equity. Now I'm going to show you a couple of tricks here first. So under the edit button, when I'm building out this watch list, if I'm going to start doing this process, I'm going to build, uh, you know, equities that are related to a certain commodity. Right? When I put in the commodity price, or excuse me, the commodity symbol, here's a little uh, clue for you, a little tip for you. Type in the root symbol of the commodity, in this case, CL for crude oil then the star and zero. And what this will do for you is uh, it will give you the nearby uh, contract for the commodity market and so that you won't have to worry about rolling over every time that commodity month uh, expires. It's a nice, nice little trick. It's basically giving you a continuation chart. The other thing that um, in the watch list, is we have our views and one of the views is on a technical aspect and one of the things that i want to kind of point out to you is something called the opinion 
Now, the opinion is not like analysts who are giving an opinion on a particular stock or you know, commodity in this case. But what these are is a, based on uh, 13 different technical indicators and their common interpretation. Now, what is important for you in this assessment is that when we look at our commodities in our bar chart opinion, those 13 indicators, and here they are, right, short term, medium term, and long term, those indicators are quite different from the indicators that we use for the stocks. Right, so there is a distinction there that you need to be aware of. But as for a process, what I'm going to do is look at, again, my opinions. What are those 13 indicators doing? And what is the signal that they're giving? For instance, for crude oil, right now, it's saying of, of those 13 indicators, 56% of them are showing actually a sell signal. Yet the indicators for the equities are showing buy signals. So here we're getting some kind of a cross current. Now, again, it doesn't mean that I don't have permission to take a trade in the Conoco or Exxon because if I looked at crude oil from our bar chart trading guide, it is still a buy signal. But again, what we talked about was yes it's a buy signal but technically right price is below the two moving averages and that's kind of what we're seeing in that process what i want to look for in our process here is i want to find those that are in concert in other words here's natural gas a buy and the equity is a buy or if we go down to gold you know a high percentage of the indicators are showing sell and the equity that relates to gold is showing a high percentage of sell. So they are in concert with each other as well as the bar chart trading guide signal as well. Okay. So all three of these components, if they're all lining up the same way, then that is going to give me greater confidence. And also, it's going to eliminate one side of a trade, right? I'm only going to be looking for sell trades if they're all selling me sell indications. Okay, so let's go to crude oil. And so the two that I put out here, and I, again, you know, as I go through this process with you guys, some of these have probably you've been in trading, you're going to be very familiar with a lot of these uh, these equities and you know it's, it's probably common knowledge but again it's not about the stock right it's really about making this connection between uh, trends that we see in the commodities and the trends that we see in the equities and giving ourselves that permission so for instance for conical Phillips we already know that we have a buy signal for crude, uh, we can see we have a buy signal for ConocoPhillips. We'll go to the chart. And again, now I'm going to have to do my due diligence and do my process. So what I have here is, and I kind of jumped ahead, but let me just start from the beginning. So, you know, we look at Conoco here, and it definitely looks like a stock that has been in a nice uptrend. That's something that I'm very interested in. Right now, I still need to do my due process, and so one of the processes that I use is I like to look at momentum uh, indicators, uh, MACDs and RSIs. And what we can see is that, uh, as of recent, now this is a daily chart. Uh, you know, we had gotten into an overbought situation on our RSI, and our momentum indicators, our MACD, are at very high elevated levels. So to me. Yeah, I'm going to give myself permission to buy Conoco, but I'm feeling that maybe the market in the short term is a little bit overbought. And maybe a, the better trade for me would be look for some kind of a drawback or a pullback in price into a demand zone for me where market will re-engage 
uh, this trend. So I probably wanted to see, you know, the RSI maybe fall back to 50 and, you know, maybe not necessarily a crossover, but at least, you know, the momentum indicators, you know, flattening and then maybe turning back positive, right? And one of the things that we can do with our charts, which is kind of cool, again, as a comparison, is we can go to um, our commodity. And again, if I use the commodity root star zero as my symbol, right, we can see that, you know, over the last six months, there's a very high correlation between the commodity price of oil and our um, oil stock. Now, what I see here is, you know, crude oil prices have fallen in recent days. We saw that on the futures trading guide, right? We're below those two moving averages, right? You know, Conoco did pull back a little bit this morning. Now it's back up again today. But here's where I'm going to be like, I'm going to be a little bit more patient. Again, I want to see the confirmation, patience in the commodity before I jump into the stock. And so probably what I want to see is, you know, a hold of a recent area of resistance that now becomes support, a change in price down here. Or in this case, we have several areas of resistance. If I look over here to the left, this is the commodity price. Right? I might not be willing to invest in an equity, in this case, Conoco, until crude oil gets above, looks like somewhere around 96.40. Okay? Again, still doing my due diligence in terms of how I want to uh, uh, trade this particular stock. All right. Let's go back to our watch list. Actually, you know what? Let's do this for a second. And I think and this is a kind of part of our process. Let me go to market um, in stock under market performance. And this is kind of an important learning lesson too, is that what we're seeing in our energy sector, right? And again, these correlations between our equities and our commodities, you know, sometimes they're very tight. Sometimes they're a little bit... Um, out of whack and what we've seen is that we kind of saw that crude oil prices are kind of trading sideways yet you know the equities that are in the energy sector are outperforming the s p so i think what we're seeing going on in this scenario is the outperformance is not based on the commodity but based on money flowing into the energy sector okay so Again, part of that due diligence process. All right, so let's go back to our watch list. It's natural gas. And there are three um, equities that uh, I kind of like to look at. Let's first look at EQT. And this is a uh, natural gas producer in the Marshall area, you know, where they're doing a lot of fracking. Um, again, I'm going to do that process, right? Um, do my due diligence, right? Here's my RSIs and my uh, MACDs, right? Not overbought. Got a little bit of a flattening of my MACDs, but you know we could certainly turn back positive in terms of technical analysis. You know we're kind of bouncing off of this most recent area of resistance. We popped through it at three, looks like three times. We didn't fall through. You know that's kind of a bad indication it just or it just means that the market needs to gather some energy before it can break back out so again in terms of technical analysis probably going to be more inclined to look for pullbacks or drawbacks in this case which the market you know i've identified an area the market didn't really give me that opportunity yet but that would be an area where i'd be more inclined now again as far as our relationship to natural gas, again, this high correlation, right? Here's a weekly chart you can see is very highly correlated. Here's a yearly chart, daily year, yearly chart, super high correlated. Are there other uh, natural gas stocks that could have a high correlation? 
Yeah, there are. But what I've discovered is this one has, I think, again, one of the highest uh, correlations in terms of natural gas. Um, for uh, Katera, not as much, right? A little muted, a little bit less volatility that uh, compared to the natural gas volatility. And then Mosaic, which if you're not familiar with this company, this is not a natural gas company. This is actually a fertilizer company. And part of the process of creating some of these fertilizers, they use natural gas as a high consumption um, industry. So what is interesting about Mosaic is that when I look at this correlation to natural gas, that what we see is that Mosaic actually kind of is a leaning indicator, right? It tends to peak before natural gas and it tends to bottom uh, before natural gas or it starts to take off a little bit before. And if you think about this, this kind of makes sense, right? Uh, if Mosaic is doing well, their business is doing well, they're making more fertilizers, they need more natural gas, they have to buy more natural gas and that drives the price of natural gas. If their business is slowing down, they're not consuming as much natural gas and so that would maybe push natural gas prices down lower. So I like looking at this one, not as a correlation for an opportunity, let's say for Mosaic, but certainly there are, but it's kind of a leaning indicator. And what we see here today is that, yeah, Mosaic has fallen, right? Again, that's kind of going right in our scenario that, you know, we're a little bit of overextended in the commodity and some of the other natural gas stocks, and now we're seeing Mosaic pull back. Now, if I look at my natural gas commodity here, this is just a line chart, but you know, my technicians in the room, what do you kind of see here, right? A little shoulder, a head, another shoulder, and looks like we're just right flirting right now with that neckline. Again, technical analysis, I would be more inclined to say, hey, let's see if we get a break of this neckline and look for, you know, an area of new support. And that would make me look for an opportunity a little bit lower in the market for this stock, maybe down here. And for EQT, I think um, we could talk about, you know, again, let me go to the stock EQT. And I'll go to, you know, a little bit of lower time frame. You know, just missed an opportunity today, right? You know, maybe a little bit down here around 40, below $45, you know, maybe even down in this support area here as well. All right. All right, soybeans and Archer Daniels. Now, uh, Archer Daniels, you know, if some of you are not familiar with this company, again, is their motto used to be they're the grocery store to the world, right? They are a large, what we call a market gatherer uh, processor. They gather all these different grains together, especially soybeans, and they create soybean meal and soybean oil. So they're definitely in the soybean uh, business, but also to a lesser extent, we can look at them in terms of corn. And again, if I look at my bar chart technical opinion for Archer Daniels, very strong buy signal. If I go back, excuse me, let me go back before we go there, go back to our soybeans, again, buy signal. And if we look at our confirmation here, what do we see? A series of higher lows. And we were making higher highs, but we just kind of bounced off of there. So that is a little bit of a cautionary trail, but you know, we still have that, that green light. Again, because we didn't make a new higher high, I'd probably be more inclined to look for drawbacks, look for buy, buying opportunities in demand zones, not really looking for breakout trades. And so let's go to back to our watch list. I know I'm jumping around a little bit here, but 
I'm going to try to get as many of these in before our session ends. So here I'm in a 60-minute time frame. We have a buy signal. I have a permission to look for buying opportunities in Archer Daniels. We've just come off of a high, and I'm kind of right into that, you know, those two moving averages. So I'm looking to buy a dip. And, you know, there's a nice little zone that I created this morning uh, that I would really like. Now, why do I like this zone? Well, this demand zone represents pretty much one whole day of price action. And then the next day, what do we see? We see this explosive candle. So that's telling me that there's probably still some buyers down here. The other thing I like about this zone is the risk the size of this zone. So the entry would be somewhere around 86.53, and the risk in this trade is 85.79, you know, about 74 cents, not a lot of risk in terms of an $80 stock, right? And those of you who uh, have spent time in some of my swing sessions, one of the rules that I like for technical analysis for swing trades is I like to find zones of risk that are about half our ATR. And again, if you wanna know how we did this process, the last swing session, webinar swing session, we talked about this process. And so you can see my ATR is $2.13, and my risk here is only uh, 75 cents. It's only about a third of uh, the ATR. So that would make for a very good trade for me. And not only that, but if we were quick enough to get this trade this morning, Right. I mean, as a day trade, we got close to almost three to one in just one day. Right. So that would have been a really nice trade. Here's where we're using the futures trading guide, the permission to look to do our due diligence. I did my technical analysis. I wanted to look for a buying opportunity on a dip. I found a zone. It fits into my risk profile and the market uh, rewards me. Corn, again, Archer Daniels, we could look at corn, but I think there are some other ones that I want to demonstrate to you. So again, let's look at corn, buy signal. We kind of looked at this one before, and I just want to remind you that the buy signal came on the third, but it looks like we really got that price confirmation somewhere between the 9th and the 11th. And so I've given you a kind of a little different take here. First of all, John Deere or Deere and Company, um, again, they're not really in the corn business, but they're in the business of making corn, right? So, uh, you know, tractors and all that. And the theory behind Deere is that as farmers make more money or as commodity their commodity prices do well, they have more money to spend for um, these particular um, goods that deer sell. So again, on a historical, let's see, let me get a better timeline here. Um, you know, on a historical basis, you know, is the correlation as pure as we saw in the EQT and natural gas? No, it's not. Because remember, we're not really directly in the corn business, but it is definitely, a, a, something you can rely on in terms of if you want to invest in deer. And so, you know, again, if I kind of break this down in terms of, you know, where is those opportunities, right? The corn price is kind of turned still in an uptrend. So maybe I'm going to look for, you know, price to pull back into an area of support or a demand zone, which would be, you know, over here, you know, around $6.60. We've just come, the stock itself has just come from an overbought RSI and our MACD has turned. So again, really from a technical standpoint, I got to be a little bit more patient, right? I'm going to look for a buying opportunity, a little bit lower, I want to buy a dip. And so I can identify some potential uh, demand zones. Now I have one here that I kind of drew out this morning, but there might be one, you know, right in here in this gap, 
right in this area. Again, you know, I'm going to probably use a little bit of patience. I don't know which one of these areas price is going to come to, but I'm going to wait until corn comes down a little bit. I'm going to wait for my RSI to maybe get to 50, maybe to 40, and then start to turn back up. And then again, wait for my MACDs to start to turn back up. So again, patience and diligence. But let's go back in time on this one. Let me go to a pure chart so we don't get confused. And again, I said that the corn gave us a buy signal on the third. And the reason why we need to use a little patience and diligence, right? Notice that in deer, you know, we got the buy signal on that day for the corn, but yet we really didn't get that confirmation in terms of deer until, you know, we got this nice explosive candle that kind of broke away from this most recent trading range. Right. And what did I say? That came somewhere around between the, you know, around the 10th or 11th. And there it is on the 10th. And again, if I go back and add back our corn. Notice that that price confirmation in deer also happens to coincide where corn broke out from a little bit of a trading range as well. Now it did come back, you know, the commodity price came back, but remember our, our commodity trading, futures trading guide was still giving us a buy signal, giving us that permission to take that trade. Okay, so that's corn. Go back to our watch list. Um, the other one here is uh, Potash, which is very similar to Mosaic. It's a fertilizer company. And again, the same kind of theory, you know, as farmers do well or as they go into planting seasons, a little seasonality, you'll see a correlation to, you know, grain prices to Potash. All right, gold and Newmart mining. Are there a lot of miners out there, a lot of gold miners? Are there other ones that we can look at? Yes, they are. But again, from my experience, uh, I just find that I think Newmont Mining does a better job of uh, shadowing the price of corn, uh, gold, not corn. <laughs> That's yellow gold, right? <laughs> so our futures trading guide for gold is a sell signal. And again, if I look at the chart, right, you know, pretty dominant downtrend here with a couple little pauses. And, you know, we're still, you know, trending lower. So that means that I'm going to give myself permission to look for selling opportunities in Newmont Mining. Now, I'm not a big shorter of stocks, but selling opportunities certainly could mean looking for trades from options, uh, puts, or uh, selling calls, uh, vertical spreads, that kind of thing. So... What I wanted to kind of show you on this one is, again, a kind of a, a more of a due diligence swing analysis, due diligence here is, so if we've been having, uh, you know, this downtrend in gold and, we, and, and our signal has been on the sell side for quite some time. So that means I'm going to look for opportunities. Again, in this case, what I've identified here was the last, real opportunity that I discovered in shorting Newmont Mining uh, was where we had a breakout, a breakdown, and then, you know, a pullback into a supply zone. And that's what these lines represent. Now, since then, uh, these two red lines represent areas where I would like to short Newmont Mining. Now, could I have taken a break away to the downside. Again, if I look at my gold commodity price, this blue line here, this is where we, you know, we broke down and that would have been a good breakout trade, but I didn't get that. Um, again, another gap breakdown um, as gold looks like it was breaking down as well. But again, I still need to do my due diligence and, you know, we're a little bit oversold here. Um, you know, momentum still is down. And this is kind of what I wanted to show you was in the big picture, right? Remember that area of supply where I 
was the real last great opportunity, you know, we were kind of high in this range of where we were in price, which means that there was a lot more room for price to move down. Now we're down here. And if I go over here to the left, you know, I see a lot of big explosive green candles, which gives me a little caution that there could be some buyers down here. Over here, I'm not really that concerned because, you know, price kind of bounced back and forth, right? Those buyers were probably used up. So looking for shorting opportunities down here, it might be a little bit risky because we're getting very low of where price originally, you know, kind of shot back up. So again, I'm gonna probably be a little cautionary here. Now, what I do see here on the weekly is, you know, nice double top and we do have kind of this double top neckline right here, right around 1727. So again, I might look for a selling opportunity as price breaks down below 1720 in gold, right? There it is right there. But I need to be very, very uh, selective in terms of the risk I'm gonna take because my target is very, very close to current price. So again, a little give and take there. I hope you appreciated the little breakdown in terms of a swing analysis on this one, but certainly for um, gold and Newmont mining, definitely looking for shorting opportunities. Um, aluminum, again, I mean, very obvious, aluminum in Alcoa, And I just wanted to show you that that nice high correlation uh, to Alcoa. Now, again, you can see we have diverged a little bit. Alcoa did rally in recent weeks where we can see that the aluminum price is actually falling. So this actually might be an opportunity um, to go in and take a short if Alcoa, let's say, broke out to the downside from this area looks like support or what we could do is wait for our futures trading guide to turn bullish right where price returns back up and breaks out on the upside here and then give us our permission to buy alcoa so we're kind of in limbo here with alcoa and so the next ones here is uh, this one is called the Toronto Stock Exchange Global Base Metals Equal Weight Index. And I know that this is not a commodity per se. But what's nice about this um, index is it's a basket of all base metals. Uh, zinc, lead, nickel, um, aluminium, as they would call it. Um, so a lot of these base metals. So because a lot of base metals are their commodity prices or the, the commodity futures contracts, you know, are, maybe the liquidity is not there. There's not a lot of price action. A little bit can be a little bit disorder. I really like this index as a way to look at base metals. Now, what some of you should be realizing right away is I'm talking about Rio Tinto here and wheat and precious metals. And if you're familiar with these two stocks, you're probably saying to yourself, well, John, these aren't base metal companies. But again, we're talking about correlations, aren't we? But if we look at Rio from a profile perspective, yeah, some of you might know it for gold and silver, but you can see that Rio is really in many different types of metals, right? Borax, coal, copper, iron ore, lead, silver, tin, right? just goes on, right? So this really is a conglomerate miner who's literally in almost every type of metal. And if I go back to my watch list and pull up our index, And here is Rio versus that base 
metal index and you can see you know this over the last year you know a really nice correlation to what is going on in base metals and what is going on in Rio Tinto all right again wheat and precious metals some of you would recognize this one this one will be found in the gold miners uh, ETF um, you know they do a lot of silver as well but here's a little fun fact for you is that you know there's really any silver pure silver mines anymore silver is actually a byproduct of mining zinc and lead so even though this company is really in the kind of the silver uh, business it does tend to follow that base metal uh, correlation so let me show you that what is it it's a uh, dollar tsx uh, i forget now i'm losing senior moment folks sorry um Go back to my watch list for a second to get the symbol. Don't get old. It's it sucks. <laughs> there it is. T X V E. Uh, all right. Some I just have to laugh at myself. And again, nice, nice correlation to to that. All right. All right. So the next one, we're, we're getting right there at the top of the hour, so we're getting we're right on time here. So the next one is uh, copper and Freeport MacMoran. Right. And again, there are other copper companies out there, but again, I think this is one that you know you kind of associated with copper. Um, I mean, very, very tightly correlated with the commodity, right? But what is nice about copper as uh, an indicator in terms of trading opportunities is that copper really is a measurement of global economic activity. In other words, as copper prices rally, it's a sign that there is good economic activity. So there is an opportunities to look for um, those equities that will are in, let's say, a growing economy in terms of in terms of using using copper. In other words, manufacturing. Um, so what I have here is. I have a year, uh, a weekly one up, and the correlation that I wanted to show you is on the materials sector. So here's a really good commodity to use to give you some trading opportunities in this particular sector. Again, inside of that sector, you could find, uh, you know, a handful of equities that could be related directly to copper. But again, looking at uh, what is going on in copper in terms of uh, the health of the economy or health of the global economy. This is a great indicator. And you can see like in the last six months or so, uh, you know, the price of copper has fallen. Now it bottomed just recently, but you know, um, it, you know, it has, pulled back and now looks like it's falling again at the same time our materials the blue line right representing the same little bounce but again where did the blue line find resistance well right where the blue line broke down right where did copper find resistance 
right where price accelerated. So here is a really good example of correlation of a commodity that looks at much at a much larger segment of equities, in this case, um, our materials sector. All right. So the final one that I want to share with you is um, lumber, random lumber. Don't do board foot lumber. Um, and then again, you know, it's pretty obvious. I think if I said to you, uh, Weisheiser, um, as you know, a lumber company, and again, you know, if I look at that correlation opportunity, uh, so let's go back to this, the commodity. Again, you know, some of these commodities are not, you know, actively traded. There's not a lot of liquidity, but you can see that nice correlation, right? As as lumber prices get more expensive, right? Uh, you know, these lumber companies do well. If they get cheaper, they become, you know, their stock might suffer a bit. Now, what the other one that I wanted to share with you is this potlatch and which is kind of interesting about this one is this is not a lumber company per se this is actually an etf um, a reit and they manage timberlands across multiple states right and so here is you know you talk about portfolio diversification who would have thought that you could get into a REIT based on a commodity, right? But again, if I look at this in terms of our lumber, which I think is LS, didn't come up again senior moment All right lsx 22 yeah i think this is one of those uh, exceptions to the rule in terms of symbology And again, this kind of this really nice uh, correlation. Again, maybe not as pure as we saw with the natural gas example, but again, you know, pretty obvious here on this one. Now, again, for the lumber, uh, some of you might say, well, what about home builders, right? And so could there be maybe, let's say, an inverse uh, relationship like with home builders? Now, it's... It, it it can be a little difficult or a little ambiguous uh, in terms of home builders. That sometimes that cheap lumber prices is good for home builders because they can build homes for a lot cheaper, but maybe lumber prices have fallen because demand for new homes has, has fallen as well. So the correlation of uh, home, new home, excuse me, home builders and lumber it fluctuates based on economic cycles and then it can have both positive and negative correlations depending on where we are in the business cycle. So it's not, a, they're not really great in terms of looking for those correlations. Okay, so I got a few min minutes here. I don't see a lot of questions, Gene. So let me take a second here and read some. Um, I Can you actually talk to folks about a little bit about the distinction about the futures trading guide as it relates to um, premier members? Sure. Uh, so the futures trading guide that John showed you earlier today in the futures tab, uh, the page that he's got up here right now, this is available for anyone to go in and take a look at. Uh, you can 
look at the full list, which is where John is now, or break it down by the different commodity categories using the tabs at the top of the page. So feel free to use this as your starting guide when you uh, start looking for commodities and, and for different ideas. Uh, if you are interested though in looking at the trade details, so you'll see for instance, the current profit there was what 3,600 plus, and then viewing the charts with all of the buy and sell signals uh, tracked on it. This is a bar chart premier feature. If you are not a premier member, we do offer a free 30 day trial and you know, it's very simple to sign up for, uh, no obligation whatsoever, but I think you'll find that once you try this out and start using the different tools on the bar chart site, you'll find some really great uh, investing ideas as John is showing you. And again, uh, just a just for my general knowledge too, Gene. So on the futures market overview, this is everybody gets to see this, so they will, everybody will see this oh, new yes. signal here, is right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the futures market overview is showing new trade alerts for the futures trading guide, and uh, these are new signals that happened. Uh, for the entry date of today, for today's entry date. And again, the, you know, these are things that where, where the nine and the 18 day moving averages cross, um, th these are both buy signals, but you'll also see a sell signal every once in a while over here when those happen. Uh, to view the complete trade, that is a bar chart feature. And also, John, if you can go back to the futures trading guide uh, page for a moment. If you're a premier member, right, go to the futures trading guide. If you're a premier member, you can receive new trade emails, uh, as John has shown you right up at the top. That will give you an email every day of any new buy or sell trades that happen to uh, show up using this nine and 18 day moving average system. Awesome, Gene, thanks so much. Yeah, I, I, I kind of mentioned that in the beginning, I don't know if folks picked up on that, that this is how I use it, I get this email, sent to me every day you know a lot of times there's the commodities and i'm not interested in, in you know like milk or butter or you know pork cutlets or whatever you know something that i'm not really interested i'm only looking for those you know those majors you know grains energies metals um and then what that does is it just kind of puts me on alert that now I'm, there might be some opportunities in those equities and then i would go through that process which i kind of work with you all right so one of the questions I get here is Eric is asked is what about using this to trade ETFs? So Eric, yeah, we do. Um, if you go into archive webinars, and I believe it's under the futures tab, um, you'd have to scroll down in here. I think it is, but we did do um, an, using the futures trading guide to look for trading opportunities in ETFs. Uh, there it is, e use ETFs to profit from appreciation futures trading market. So Eric, watch that one if you wanna know what I use. There's a lot of complexity in this one because there are some ETFs that just track the futures markets, for instance, like um, corn or soybean um, or boil. Uh, some of them are leveraged, multiple leveraged, but there are ETFs, for instance, like, um, you know, like the gold miners um, ETF, right? You could definitely use that one. And again, if you don't want to, you know, want to look at correlations, right? I kind of anticipated this question. So good job, Eric. You know, here's our gold. And, you know, can you use this? Yeah, you can. I just wanted to take that process to the equity level, all right? Hey, John, along with that, uh, one other thing that I would like you to maybe show people. So if you pull up any futures contract, uh, you know, gold, for instance, now, uh, and we're going to go to the price overview page. If you're looking for, whoops. 
Yep, backspace. Yeah, I know what you want. <laughs> you know what I'm going for here? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I I forgot all about this. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it, Gene. Go That's back why over you're on board. Price. I love having you here with me. Yeah, the price overview page and the related inst or the related ETFs down toward the bottom. There you go. So if you're looking for ETFs that are related to a specific commodity, we give you a handy little guide right there uh, for you to start doing some analysis on. And and even to take it one level further, right? I think we can also filter for that, right? We can go into uh, in ETFs, right? We can look for very specific funds, right? So under ETF finder, is that would that be right, Gene? Yeah, that way, yes, you can search for the specific commodity by ETF. Right. So, go. for instance, agriculture's. And then let's say grains or let's do corn, right? And then there's the corn ETF. Okay. And this one is based on the, the futures market. It's not unbiased about the companies um, in there. So Eric, you know, there's different types of ETFs that are related to commodities. You know, I probably would stay away from the leveraged ones that are due with the actual futures contracts and look at the ones that have more of the equities that are involved in it, okay? Um, okay, Ben, I have, I have an, one more question that uh, has been asked multiple times. People wanna know if they can get a copy of your watch list. So here's what I'm gonna suggest. Uh, John, go ahead and pull your watch list up that you started off the session taking a look at. Okay, so John's got the watch list up here. A little bit later on this afternoon, you are all going to get an email with a link to the recording of this webinar. And what I would suggest you do is open up that recording video, go all the way to the end of the video, which is you know, we're at the end of the session right now, and then stop the video. You'll be able to make a screenshot with all of the symbols. The, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but you just manually curated this watch list uh for today's session is that correct? yeah again from from experience again there could you know in your process and you could look for correlations you could look for other ones are these are there other markets that could be possibilities yeah these are just the ones again you know from the disclosure statement is these are the ones that i rely on these are the ones over years of experience that i find just have tend to have a little bit better correlation over a longer period of time, especially when we catch one of those nice those nice trends. All right, so good job. All right, so as far as takeaways, right, um, I really kind of only have two takeaways for you, and they're really more food of thought, and this is why we have this little graphic up here. And the food of thought here is, that the futures trading guide is not a buy or sell signal for our individual commodity equities. It's just merely that green light permission to start our process, our risk assessment, our trade plan, our permission to start trading these equities that are commodity sensitive. And that like trends, correlations come and go. And it's important for you to do your due diligence in terms of when you trade and what you are trading. Okay, so we're right at a little bit over, but again, let's talk about what's coming up. And so next week we are actually off and we're not meeting again until uh, Wednesday, September 14th. In that session, we're gonna look at the trader's cheat sheet, which is kind of really more of a day trader's tool, but we're gonna break down the cheat sheet in terms of what are the different uh, technical components that are in there. We're gonna look at something called floor trader pivots, but swing traders, come and sit in on this session, even though this is kind of designed for day traders. I'm going to show you how to use the daily cheat sheet in your swing trading to help you reduce your entry risk and to maximize your target profits on days of action. So come and learn how to do that. So I think you will enjoy that. 
Also, I always want to remind you that all of our webinars are on our YouTube page. You can access them. If you're watching on the YouTube page, please give me a, a thumbs up, like, and make sure that you subscribe uh, to our YouTube page so you're alerted of when we have new uh, videos up. All right, Gene, anything else? I think that's about it, right? That's about it. Well, listen, Gene, thanks for your help. I, I always love having your expertise in terms of the website. You made for a great session today. I hope folks enjoyed today's session. It was a little bit different from what we normally do. And until next time, I want to wish you the best health, be safe out there, and the good of all trading.